Hi, it's Kristen. Welcome back for another DIY video. In today's video, my husband Scott is sharing with you how we shiplapped this wall behind us. We've tried a couple different versions of shiplap from just using thin plywood to create a shiplap look to tongue and groove and now these newer shadow boards have achieved our favorite results so far so we hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like this video if you think my wife should let me in these videos more often. <laughs> So today we're putting up a shiplap accent wall. Uh, in the past we have used just a thin five millimeter uh, sheet of plywood that we've cut down to eight inch uh, strips and uh, used that to create kind of a, a shiplap look, spacing them with nickels. Uh, this time we actually bought a shiplap product that has a, a bit of a lip here that automatically creates that gap. Um, we purchased these and we're gonna try it this way this time. First thing you're gonna wanna do once you have your materials all ready to go, uh, is you're gonna wanna go ahead and mark the studs. The way I did that, uh, my stud finder wasn't working properly, so I started by, um, with the outlet, finding where the stud was there. Studs are typically 16 or 24 inches apart. Ours are 16 inches apart, so I just measured out. And uh, the way I double checked that we found the stud is just with a drill, small drill bit, push it through the drywall, and uh, you'll feel whether you hit the stud or whether it's just freely uh, moving past that drywall. So now that we've got our studs marked with our level, it's time to install. All right, so I went ahead and put up the first uh, line of shiplap here. Now, uh, according to the instructions, you do want the, there are, there are two kind of lips here. You do want the uh, longer piece on the top, and you're gonna wanna put one nail um, uh, into the, uh, the main part of the board and one up here on the lip. Uh, and I just went down each stud and put two in there. I like that you put one on the face and one inside. That means one less to uh, have to fill when you're all done. To install the pieces, I'm just using a pin gun. I'm using it at about 60 PSI. That seems to bury it just enough to where it'll be easy to fill. All right, so we've got our first outlet that we've got to cut around. I got lucky in that this first, or the second piece here came really close to the bottom. Just had to notch out a little bit to make sure I have room to pull that box out at the end, which we'll show you at the end. Um, and then I just cut around that opening with my jigsaw. Now as you go, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that um, the pieces are, are, are resting in there fully. Sometimes the boards are not completely straight, so they do need just a little downward pressure. And you can go down here to the end and look and see. Finally, we've got a 10 foot wall and of course eight foot boards. So what I'm doing is that last two feet, I'm just gonna alternate every other, uh, putting the, uh, the seam on this side and then the other, and we'll take it all the way up. As you continue to install your boards, I do recommend periodically checking to ensure your shiplap is staying level. All right, so just a couple quick notes about some of the cuts and decisions we made. Uh, when butting the shiplap together, if you do have a, a wall that is longer than the pieces of shiplap you have, of course, you're gonna have to have two join one another. Uh, one way to do it is just with a straight uh, joint where you have two flat edges meeting one another. It's called a butt joint. Um, now the disadvantage to that is it does show the seams a little bit more. The advantage of course is it's just simpler. Uh, another way of doing it is you would cut a 45 degree angle, a miter cut, and when you join those two together, it does have the tendency to hide that joint just a little better. You would typically do that with chair rail molding or something like that. Uh, with some of the measurements, uh, I decided to just do the butt joint, keep it simple, and then uh, spackle over the seams. So far, I'm happy with the result. You can't see the seams, and the shiplap is supposed to be a little rustic, so we're happy with just joining the two together as opposed to that miter cut. If you have a miter saw, it gives a little cleaner uh, seam between the two. Secondly, uh, we decided to put a piece of trim around the edge called a lattice uh, joint trim. Uh, it's just an inch and a quarter, I believe, a uh, rectangular piece of trim. Now, because I don't have a miter saw today, I just used a miter box to get that nice 45 degree angle, which we're gonna put up around the corners. Now all that's left to do is to fill the nail holes, any joints you may have, sand once it's nice and dry, and you're ready to paint. All right, so two things I wanted to mention to you. One is the baseboards. What a lot of people do is they'll take out their traditional baseboards 
and just shiplap all the way down to the ground. Uh, because we're just doing an accent wall, to be quite honest, we didn't really want to trouble with uh, taking the baseboards out. So we just left the baseboards there, set the first piece down uh, right on top of it, as you can see. And we felt like, you know, with the, without looking too terribly closely, it blends in really well. And so we're happy with that. That way, we, if we wanted to, we could easily take the shiplap off and there's no, no real change there. All right, so next I wanna go and show you how to pull the outlet box out from the wall. Of course, we've added some depth here. And so your plug is gonna be buried into the, uh, the shiplap a little bit. So uh, first thing I wanna do is, of course, turn off the power to the outlet. I recommend getting one of these testers so you can ensure there's no power uh, there so you, you don't have uh, uh, any risk. Uh, but essentially, I just bought one of these extenders. They're very inexpensive. I uh, pulled the two screws out of here, pulled it out, and what we're gonna do is just reset that back in uh, to into place. And it does come with uh, longer screws that we're gonna attach and uh, then just add the faceplate. So typically when I've done projects like this before, I've used a thinner product like tile or like a, a faux ship lap with a Luan type thing. And uh, I just have to pull the outlet box a little bit. So I've just purchased little spacers, works great. With this being a thicker product, I felt like this extender would work better. One thing I did not uh, account for, because I didn't have this when I did this project, is these pieces here have to sit flush against the new finished wall. Now, because I cut enough room to, to give myself some room to work, there's nothing for it to sit against, and it could potentially pull back flush to where it was to begin with. So all I did was cut myself a little uh, piece here. What I'm gonna do is use that as a, a spacer essentially so it has something to rest against and I can make sure it doesn't get pulled back in the wall. Also, once you add the face plate, that'll kind of tighten it up forward as well. So we hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Myself or Kristen will respond to those. Don't forget to subscribe, like, how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> yep, like this video, subscribe if you wanna see more, and we'll see you in our next one. Ring that bell. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>